In 2008, I was in between graduate programs and I was a research coordinator on a cancer study. We were interviewing women that had been diagnosed with breast cancer more than 10 years prior and asking women to complete a telephone interview that lasted up to an hour. We asked about quality of life issues, about health and lifestyle, about medical diagnoses they may have had since their previous cancer diagnosis, as well as psychosocial concerns, anxiety, depression. We asked people to stay on the phone for up to an hour and we did not provide a monetary incentive. And women were willing to do this research study. One woman in particular is a story that I'd like to tell that really stuck with me throughout my career. And that is a woman who told me at the beginning of our interview that she, her cancer had returned and that she was dying. The first thing that came to my mind was something that was off script. And that was, why did you decide to spend your time doing this research study? And she said, because if this is something that I can do to help people what I've experienced in the future, then I'm gonna spend my time doing so. This was something that was very powerful and helped me to see that time is such a valuable and intangible thing. And how we spend our time is very, an important glimpse, a very important glimpse of who we are as a person. And so that's really what attracted me to population health research and epidemiology. And I've spent my last 10 years of my career as a postdoc and as an assistant professor designing epidemiology studies in populations where I have meaningful intentions to engage with people so I can explain their stories and really recognize the time that people put in to participating. And so I think that it's important to talk about what is epidemiology. A lot of people in the last couple of years have in the forefront of their mind the COVID pandemic. And what we see is that there's a lot of numbers that are associated, looking at curves, looking at how COVID has been distributed in our population. And uh, one thing that I'd like to, uh, I guess, just really have uh, a say in is that uh, when we talk about how epidemiology is operationalized and how it's viewed in the population, uh, sometimes people think epidemiologists run around trying to vaccinate everyone. And so one of the things that uh, I try to tell my grandma, that's not necessarily the case, that's not everything that epidemiologists do or public health officials, and one of the things that we do is track and explain the disease occurrence in infectious and chronic disease. And so we're interested in describing how disease is distributed by person, place, and time. So let's visualize a map of the United States because the data that we track, disease surveillance data, can tell a story. So within the southeastern United States, there are several states that have the highest heart disease and cancer mortality rate. Those are the two leading causes of death. And I'm sure each one of us can, if we think about it, have all been touched by heart disease and cancer, either personally or we know someone that's been affected by it. But we can agree that there isn't a random distribution of mortality across the United States. The highest mortality is concentrated within the southeastern United States. So let's take a closer look at Kentucky, where I'm from and where we are currently, here in Danville. If you look at heart disease and cancer mortality rates, there's a much higher variation in, in the eastern part of the state about 40% higher in the eastern part and the Appalachian part of Kentucky than the western part. Again, this is not a random distribution, and so what epidemiologists aim to explain is why there isn't a random distribution. What are some of the determinants for why there is excess cardiovascular disease and mortality? And so one of the things that we discuss and we try to evaluate is are there certain determinants such as the health distribution of health and lifestyle factors, social determinants, access to health, other things that may impact uh, health such as exposures to environmental factors. And so I think that um, really what's important here is that 
we have population data that we track that tells a story, but we can further hypothesize other scientific questions and go out into the community to evaluate population health in a more detailed manner. And so this is really the premise of a, a study that's a landmark study here in the United States that was just funded five years ago. It's called the Rural Heart and Lung Study. And the premise of this study is to evaluate why some rural counties in southeastern United States have a higher prevalence of chronic disease and cardiovascular mortality outcomes. This study is really actually a very interesting study. It, we have uh, two principal investigators that manage a team of 14 other investigators. I'm one of the core principal investigators where we are trying to explain uh, the, the variation within the cardiovascular disease realm and how we can take an innovative design that we are calling Research on Wheels. So what we're trying to do is, is take a mobile exam unit where we go into communities to evaluate subclinical cardiovascular disease. One of the things that scientists don't really know is when the disease actually starts. So within the context of place, is there some difference within the determinants of health in the context of place in when the disease starts? And so that's part of our interest and one of the pillars of this study is to engage the community. And so what I'm going to talk about is really how the engagement of the community and actually meaningfully spending your time is gonna be important for the long-term success of a longitudinal study. And really trying to explain to people that develop, by developing a boots on the ground network and having the time and the passion that you invest into explaining what population health is and how community health can affect individual health and individual health can, can affect community health is gonna be extremely important. And so how we designed that team includes going out in the field, and that in the field is where passion and emotion really fuse together. And so we're trying to uh, explain that with public health, we are trying to advance science by understanding how things work together in aggregate. The data works together in aggregate to tell a story. But the human experience within that story is really gonna be something that has to be conveyed and is important to us as epidemiologists. And I feel like that sometimes gets lost when we have uh, people who are looking at the innovative technologically advances that we're trying to uh, inform on with the study designs that we have. It's really neat that we have a mobile exam unit coming into the community that we are going through and we're doing coronary artery calcium scans, echocardiography, and also thinking through uh, questions that we can ask in a survey design. But what's important, I think, is that we are trying to build the trust and the genuine rapport within communities so that people understand how they can help advance science how they can invest their time, and it's time well spent. So we have a, a network that we respectfully engage with, and we go through and we, we present to people. We talk to individuals. We actually spend and invest the time going into communities and talking to people in their offices. It's not anything that's a novel approach. However, from a perspective of an epidemiologist, it's something that remains unclear in terms of the community engagement aspect because we're not trying to answer questions that are necessarily the community's concerns. However, our information can inform on things that would be of need in the community in terms of health assessments. Um, it's particularly if we can evaluate prevalence. So I think that the biggest thing that I wanted to explain, and that includes arcing back to the story with the woman with limited time. And that is, there's a human element to population research, to observational research. And I think that 
independent of science, what's important is showing people that they can value their contribution to a population health or epidemiology study. I think that we can all agree that time, the way we spend our time should be intentional, but importantly, no matter what we do in life, if we have the investment of time and passion, those are two things that really move us forward. So uh, in closing, I think that what I would like to ask you is how do you choose to spend your time? Are you intentional with how you spend your time? Thank you.